Good morning, everybody. I've been thinking a lot about the Occupy Wall Street protests, and I really think that the other side is letting an opportunity slip through their fingers, because all these right-wingers and conservatives that are coming on TV and, and on the radio and trying to, to demonize the Occupy Wall Street guys and, and the, the We Are the 99% group and calling them hippies and calling them a mob and saying that they all need to go out and get jobs, which I think is what a lot of them want. Um, instead of doing all that, they, they should come out and stage their own counter-protests. You know, I mean, if you're threatened by or affronted by the, the We Are the 99% guys, then, then stage your own marches. Get, get the, the billionaire CEOs and the hedge fund managers and, and the, the bankers and the Wall Street guys to come out and do, do like an Occupy Main Street type thing. Come, come gather in our, our uh, public squares and town parks and the small American towns all over the country, like Sharpsburg, where I live. It's right out the window there, but you can't see. Um, and hold up your own signs. Make your own protests. Hold up signs that say stuff like, keep your hands off our capital gains. You know, that'll really get people on your side. Or, or don't cut the strings on our golden parachutes. Something like that. Uh, just because we can pay more doesn't mean we want to. You know, think, something like that. that'll, that'll get people on your side, man. Just, you need to quit bitching and just get out there and make this interesting, you know? Okay. The following comments are taken from editions of Mail Call, printed in the Herald Mail, from October 3rd to October 14th, 2011, which can be viewed online in their entirety at www.herald-mail.com. First up from Hagerstown, I would like to know, how do other people handle this problem? I have Medicare and supplementary insurance, but they do not cover entire medical bills. I get bills for balances due like $1.60 or anything below $5. Hate to write a check for these amounts, and it takes gas to just go to the places to pay. Then they charge you interest if over 30 days, or turn it over to a collection agency. I realize that they have, if they have lots of these small amounts, it adds up to a lot of money. How do you handle this problem? Well, great-grandma, I have a check card that I use to pay all my bills online. I don't have to write anything, and I don't have to leave the house. But since you don't seem to know, or even more puzzlingly, to want to know that those things exist, here's my advice. Write the fucking checks. You don't like writing small checks. Why? Because you're old and you're weird. Get over your weird, arbitrary, old person hang-up about writing small checks, and just write the check for a buck sixty. When the top 10% of the wage earners pay 70% of the federal income tax in America and 48% pays no federal income tax, according to the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, and the president says they are not paying their fair share, that is, the millionaires and the billionaires, is he being dishonest with us or doesn't he know any better? I'd much rather see the small businesses have the money to create jobs than the federal government to waste our money. Boonesboro. You realize that if top earners did pay a few more percent in their taxes every year, one of the ways the government would likely find to waste that money would be in the form of tax breaks to small businesses, correct? Also, I've said this before, but it bears repeating in light of this comment. It's true that the top 10% do not pay their fair share. Yes, they pay 70% of the taxes, but they control 80% of all the wealth. So... I figure they owe another 10%. Now, that's not nearly as much as Obama is asking them to pay. And please, by all means, do your own math, because I was an English major. I'd like to know whose idea it was to put a roundabout in the front of the junior college. We have a hospital down there, and ambulances are going to be flying down that road. Please reconsider. Not a very good idea at all. Williamsport. Yes, it was recently announced that the intersection in front of Hagerstown Community College will be replaced by a roundabout. It's the biggest news around here since Boonesboro banned raisin chickens. And mail call has been flooded with complaints, like the one I just read, and like this one. Please do not put a roundabout in at Hagerstown Community College. I live right down from there, and it will be a madhouse. It's already very busy there. It's going to be utter confusion. And I know it's even going to cost more money to put that in, so please, no roundabout. Hagerstown. 
Um, it's already a madhouse. Everybody knows that it's crazy busy down there. That's why they're putting in the roundabout. I, I honestly don't see why this is such a big deal. There were way, way more calls in mail call the last two weeks complaining about this roundabout than the ones that I've read here just now. There's a roundabout on my wife's way to work, all right? She drives through it every day. I've driven through it a bunch of times. You yield from the left, and then you go to the right. What is so fucking hard about that? You know, in the last few months, I've been observing people. I think some of them, especially young people, are trying to see how weird they can make themselves look. You might just see any kind of a sight out there in public anymore. Something that people would never have dreamed of 15, 20 years ago. They're absolutely weird looking. Sharpsburg. Today's weird young people dress like this. The weird young people 20 years ago dressed like this. The weird young people 30 years ago dressed like this. Weird is relative, and nothing new. Fifteen years ago, twenty years ago, people were saying exactly the same things about how their young people dressed as you're saying now. And just in case you need me to remind you, in the 60s, lots of parents and grandparents thought that these guys were weirdos. They're wearing suits! This is on taxes. As far as federal taxes and state taxes, I think the mega-rich churches ought to be starting to pay their share of taxes, too. They've been tax-free for so long that most of them are beginning to stink. And as far as the teachers and their 2% raise in their pay and their pensions and their 2% raise in their health care, they're still better off than most Americans who have to work by the sweat of their brow. Hagerstown. Oh, you had me! And then you lost me! Can you guess where? For the Hagerstown caller referencing the SNAP program for homeless animals and why there isn't a program for homeless people, perhaps it's time for the homeless people to show some personal responsibility, get help with their alcohol slash drug addictions, perhaps receive some job training. With some changes on their part, they wouldn't be in a position of being homeless. Remember, the Lord helps those who help themselves. Hagerstown. That's the moral of the parable of the Good Samaritan, isn't it? Um, you know what I love is the suggestion from this guy that the homeless should simply receive some job training. Like, there's so much job training out there for homeless people, and they simply just aren't receiving it. I'm calling regarding the caller who talked about people coming to restaurants and staying all day and not leaving adequate tips. I agree with that. I work at one of the local buffets, and I'm finding that the major culprits are the church groups that come in on Sundays, and they stay for hours, and we make minimum wage, and they leave us the minimum of tip. Hagerstown. The Lord helps those who help themselves, sweetheart. It's true. Just ask someone from one of those church groups that come in this Sunday. They'll tell you it's in the Bible, even though it's not. Well, I never really had much of an opinion of Hank Williams Jr., but I did respect him because he appeared to be a true American. Well, he proved that because he made a comment about the president and Joe Biden. Now he's being censored for it. They've even pulled his introductory song from the beginning of ESPN's Monday Night Football. Now, that's really getting socialistic. The man just made an opinion, which he's entitled to, and right away he's being penalized and censored for it. Hank Williams now has another fan, and that is myself, Hagerstown. So, socialist is now a word without a meaning, right? It's just something vaguely sinister for people to accuse liberals of being, right? Just, I want to make sure that we're clear on that. Uh, the Hank Jr. thing, getting the song pulled from Monday Night Football, has nothing to do with socialism or censorship or freedom of speech. Hank Jr. went on TV and said something idiotic and ESPN decided to distance themselves from him, much as they did several years back when uh, they fired Rush Limbaugh after he said that uh, Donovan McNabb was getting preferential media coverage because he was a black quarterback. It's, I, I think it's kind of silly, personally, but it's their decision. They have every right to do it. It has nothing to do with censorship or freedom of speech or socialism or people and their stupid, bigoted opinions, which they still have every right to hold and to express, which is great news for Hank Jr. This is to the person who called from Keatesville regarding the Japanese and waterboarding in World War II. 
They have no knowledge whatsoever of the history of World War II. The Japanese were not executed for waterboarding. They were executed for cutting heads off, for bayoneting injured and sick prisoners, much like the Muslims do now. Whatever it takes to get the information to save American lives, we do it. Morgansville. Whatever it takes to torture people on the pretense of saving American lives. I think, I think that's what you meant to say just now, right? Because torture is an unreliable means of getting information from a prisoner. There's really no reason to ever do it, other than sadism. And finally, from Hagerstown, the Republicans told us in 2001 that giving tax breaks to the job creators, top 2%, would create jobs. Where are the jobs, Republicans? It's been 10 years. It's time to go, Roscoe Bartlett. Agreed, but uh, 10 years? Dude, Roscoe's been there for almost 20 years. For those of you that don't know, Roscoe Bartlett is the member of Congress for our local area here, and he's the second oldest man in the House of Representatives. How old is Roscoe Bartlett? Well, here's a photograph of him from around the time when he was first elected. And here he is addressing the House earlier this year. He's really, really old. And he's a member of the Tea Party Caucus. Did I need to say that? Thanks for watching.